Geekazine and Geek Smack is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network over at techpodcast.com. If it's tech, then it's here. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, don't mind this. It's just, uh, I guess, a blemish or something like that. Maybe I hit myself over the evening. I don't know. Something like that. Anyway, my name is Jeffrey Powers, and you're on another episode of the Geekish of Schmackish Shows, the Geek Smack, where we smack the geek just like we would, I don't know, top, top trends, of two th- trends of 2011. One of the trends will be that I'm going to learn how to speak this year. Yeah, that's going to be one of the top trends. And ladies and gentlemen, our show is brought to you by our friends over at Roku. Stop dreaming, start streaming. Go over to geekazine.com forward slash Roku to find out how you can get a player for $49. Over at Mosey Pro, learn how you can get 15% off to back up your small or business or small business by going over and using our codes PODCAST15. Uh, Geekazine.com and Stitcher Internet Radio, if you enter in your email address and download the software, you could win yourself $100 by going over to Stitcher.com forward slash geek. And, of course, all this video is produced by Wirecast. Produce live webcasts yourself by going over to geekazine.com forward slash Wirecast PC or geekazine.com forward slash Wirecast Mac. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a little video for you. I hope you like it. Here it goes. This is Geek Smack. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Geek Smack, the show where we smack the geek out of you with some tech news, with some geek news, and a whole bunch of in-between. And ladies and gentlemen, happy, happy, happy new year, and a happy new year to you and you and you and you and you and all of you out there in internet world. Welcome to Geek Smack. If this is the first time that you've come to the Geek Smack, well, welcome to the Geek Smack. We do this every single Tuesday for Wednesday consumption. Well... Uh, well, we're doing the new year, and we're gonna do. We're gonna skip a couple weeks. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that, and then we're gonna roll again, roll in, roll in, roll in. But you know, hey, the big news is in three days. Three days, I head out to Las Vegas. Viva Las, whatever. Anyway, so uh, I go out there, and of course, the Consumer Electronics Show is happening uh, next week. So this time Tuesday, I will be preparing. For CES, I'll be doing my meditations, um, um, my exercises, and so on and so forth. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We always have fun at the Consumer Electronics Show. We're going to be talking about the Consumer Electronics Show in the feature today, and we're going to talk about the preview. But I wanted to let you know that next week there's no show. The week after that, there's no show. We're going to take two weeks off. We might take a third week off, or I might take a third week off. That's how it usually goes. I usually say we when I mean I. Maybe it's the people in my head. We are taking a week off. So you can check that all out over at uh, (laughs) geekazine.com and, of course, uh, geeksmack.com. So uh, check that out. Um, Of course, you can always help by by donating some cash, $25, $50, $100, or your choice. And then, of course, our main sponsor, GoDaddy, you can get yourself 25% off hosting plans over at godaddy.com all right ladies and gentlemen that's enough of that and that looks kind of awkward so we'll do that so ladies and gentlemen boys and girls children of all ages let's get into your tech smack for the week smack. 
We're going to start over at Venture Beat, and Google has been found uh, they could be doing something that they've actually banned which is kind of weird. Google, uh, basically for search engine optimization or SEO, you basically have this thing where you say, hey, okay, um, you, if, if you pay for articles and it's shown that you're paying uh, bloggers for articles, we're going we're gonna to cut down the SEO. You're going to get in trouble for that. Uh, companies like JCPenney, Overstock have done this, and they have, uh, they basically have, that they've been ousted off of that. Well, let me tell you something. Google was found to do the exact same thing. Believe it or not, Google is also getting themselves in trouble. Series of low quality posts that basically said uh, uh, they were sponsored by Google's Chrome browser. So that's not good for Google. And let me tell you something. If they're doing what they say that they shouldn't be doing, then they should get in trouble. I think so. Anyway, if you want to read more on that, go over to VentureBeat.com. Let's move from there. We're going over to Apple Insider. iOS and Android have been posting record app downloads of 1.2 billion during that last week of 2011. So you downloaded a bunch of apps, which means that you got your smartphones and your tablets during Christmas. So there is a record number of shows. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're not watching my new show, iPad 365, you should. That's that's all there is to it. Watch my show, iPad 365. It's over at geekazine.com forward slash iPad 365. Straightforward like that. Mondays we do business apps. Tuesdays we do games. Wednesdays we do uh, utilities. Thursdays we've got, uh, what do we have? We have productivity on Thursdays and then Fridays, uh, Fridays viewer choice. Saturdays wild card and Sundays are fun days. So if you're getting yourself apps, check out what apps we got over there. So anyway, of course, all these show notes are over on Geekazine.com. Go over to Geekazine.com, subscribe to the show notes over on Geek Smack, and of course, this will come into your inbox every single week. I think I've got the because there's an actual click click here to subscribe. I got that working. It was not working for some reason, but I did get it to work, so you can probably check that out over there. Of course, uh, you can Twitter me at Geekazine if you have any questions, and Geekazine at gmail.com. We do have the hotline of 608-205-4378. All right, let's move on here. We're going to move over to digitaltrends.com, and that didn't... I had to resize that screen. I don't... No, that's right. That's right. Uh, Google Plus traffic is, uh, was it uh, expected that they said 55% and they reached an all-time high of 40 million, 40 million views in, uh, in December. So anybody that's saying that Google Plus is dead is absolutely wrong. Wrong. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, Google Plus, uh, they're big, they still have some some problems. Like for instance, their business area. I still think that if they, if anything, with that API, they should open it up for the brand pages, so I can actually start posting like I do through Twitter, like I do through Facebook, onto my brand page instead of me having to to create a link, go over to the brand page and physically create a link. Um, once that happens, then we're going to really start rolling on, on stuff. But people are flocking over to Google+. Plus. I'm really happy for it because Google+, Plus is actually a really, really cool a cool item to have. Although, I do have to admit, the iPhone version of Google+, Plus sucks. It still sucks. So if you use it on the regular PC, my biggest problem is I take a picture and I want to post that picture. It doesn't post the picture. It just it just disappears. It's like I post it, hit the post button, gone, and nothing. And I have a 3GS, so maybe that's it. I, I tried reloading the program. That didn't work. Um, so there's got to be something with the software. Google Plus, please fix that. So anyway, digitaltrends.com for that article. All right, moving on over to the Mac Observer. Apple has come up with a media event that they're going to target iBooks and publishing. That's the rumor. They're iTunes. I'm really hoping that they're going to say, iTunes, we're kind of getting rid of that legacy application crud. And you got your iCloud, iTunes is in the iCloud. Totally. Because right now you still have to get iTunes to, to get your podcasts and download certain stuff. They had uh, the, the show ABC show Pan Am is, uh, I don't know if it still is, but it was, and I posted it on my Twitter. So if you're not following Geekazine on my Twitter, 
thing you should. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, that that show Pan Am that was on ABC, all nine episodes are on. I know that's on Amazon for free, and I know that it's on uh, on iTunes for free. So download it now so you can watch the uh, I uh, Pan Am because it was it was actually a pretty interesting show. And yeah, it did have uh, and I can't think of a right name right now. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going insane, insane in the membrane. I think I need more bacon. Oh, that reminds me. Did you see the shirt? Did you see the shirt? Oh, that's, oh, there it is. There's my button. This is one of the shirts. And of course, uh, one of our, uh, one of our friends over at LOL shirts had sent me some shirts. So I'm wearing some of these shirts. Bacon is good for me. As you can see, bacon has been very good meat for me for the ages. So if you want to get that shirt, you can go over um, we'll have a link oh, in the show notes, of course, and you can get that shirt and many others. We had the, uh, um, that's what Siri said, which was a couple weeks ago. And I think the Nam shirt was last week. So check that out. And that's, uh, and of course this article is over at MacObserver.com. Let's move from here. We're going over to Mashable.com. You know, poor Rim. That's all I have to say is poor, poor Rim. They can't really get the tablet going. And of course, we I did a uh, five tablet fails over on Geek News Central. I wrote an article over there, and one of the fails was the BlackBerry Playbook. It was a good, all of these tablets that I that I talked about in that article are actually good in one way or another, except they just failed on on something small, like for instance the display or 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 the operating system or or whatnot. It's the Playbook is one of those. It could if if they if they really work at it and they come out, maybe even a playbook too will become the, uh, the tablet that, that, that will pretty much vault rim into the next thing. I think it was the display issue that was the problem with the uh, BlackBerry playbook where the display, the color, the contrast wasn't that great. If you don't care about that stuff, then this tablet might be good for you. It's $299 now. So you can check that out. If you want to read more about this, this is over at Mashable.com. All right, let's move from here. Let's go over to uh, gadgetbox.msnbc.msn.com. There's a there was they found on Android a Siri um, knockoff, and it, and it was in the Android App Store, and then it disappeared in the Android App Store. Don't worry, you didn't miss a thing because this basically what the app did. You open up the app, and then it basically sent you to the personal assistant which is already part of the Android operating system on your mobile device. So you're not missing anything by losing this application. But if you want to read more about it, people are trying to make Siri clones all the time. And uh, this one leaked into the store, but really didn't mean anything. So, But if you want to check out it, uh, go over to msnbc.msn.com. All right. We're going to talk about this towards the feature, of course. But Ultrabooks are going to be the craze. Ultrabooks are the next generation laptop. Um, MacBook Air, technically, that's, that's what an Ultrabook will be. MacBook Air is not an Ultrabook because they use the Mac A5 processor. But the Ultrabook, which will have multiple processing in it, is going to be there. And you can, you'll, you'll start seeing it at Consumer Electronics Show. Uh, Spectre has a great glimpse out there, so you can check it. This is over on eWeek.com. All right, let's move on from here. Let's go over here. This is a new website. It's called Digital Media Wire, a new website for me. Once again, if there's anything wrong with it, if you have any problems with it, let me know. I'll take the link off and we'll relink it here. But they did the uh, top 10 predictions of wireless in 2012, which is something that you should think about. The first one they're, they're saying is there's a recession likely to hinder smart device sales. And I don't think that's the case. Everybody needs a phone. Everybody needs a device to, to view something on. If anything... These mobile devices are going to get stronger in 2012, especially on uh, December 21st. We're all going to be running. We're going to be tableting and we're going to be Facebooking and Twittering and saying, oh, my God, there's a big earthquake over here. We better stop taking pictures and videos that nobody's going to see because everybody's in peril. It happens. So there is one thing that I do like on here, and that's number four. They say that it's the year of the quad core processor and all these mobile devices, your, your smartphone, your tablet, will start seeing quad core processing. And because of that, we might actually start seeing productive tablets and productive smartphones. You know, you have applications in there 
I saw that flicker again. I'm still have, I must still have that flicker problem. Interesting. Anyway, uh, you see the uh, you see the the quad core and uh, and these tablets that have faster processing. We might start seeing people doing big time video and 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 audio editing and photo editing on a major scale using nothing but a tablet. And that's pretty cool. You could actually, I have, a, I have no doubt in my mind that one day they're going to do a, like a four camera video shoot of some band and the guys are going to be holding up tablets or smartphones and then it's going to be wirelessly uh, um, pushed out to a station which that station will then capture the video and of course capture the audio and make something like what a show like I'm doing right now. That would be really cool. So a cameraman would basically be this and we're talking on a more powerful production more than just holding up the camera and, and posting it on YouTube actual production value so lots of different things you can do on that but if you want to read that go over to dmwmedia.com dmwmedia.com all right well one more article here and then we're going to get you on the geek side this is over at the New York Times and basically it's an article over a Twitter account um, and this is why you should never create a Twitter account and attach it to a company because you never know what's going to happen if the company disappears tomorrow. If you get fired from the company, then all of a sudden all that hard work that you do for that Twitter account, gone. You make a Twitter account for the company. So when you leave the company, they get the Twitter account. You make your own personal tw uh, Twitter. So when you leave the company, you get that Twitter. Well, and this is the dispute. The guy, uh, Noah Kravis is his name. He lives in Oakland. Excuse me, he quit his uh, job at Phone Dog. Phone Dog basically said, okay, well, well he, he goes, well, what do we do with this Twitter account? Because he's got this Twitter called Phone Dog Noah, which had 17,000 uh, followers on it. Well, Phone Dog said, well, if you continue to Twitter and do good with us, then, uh, then you can keep the, the Twitter account. And he goes, okay, I'll do that. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll send out some tweet tweets and stuff like that. And then everybody was happy. Well, I, apparently Phone Dog wasn't happy, and they said that he got he got he's getting sued for thirty three hundred forty thousand dollars. Now they figure it at two dollars fifty cents per Twitter name per month. Amazing. And so they're they're going to court on that for Phone Dog underscore Noah. And of course, I bet you by now the seventeen thousand Twitter fans on Phone Dog underscore Noah has probably just jumped up to fifty or something like that by reading people reading this article so this is why you got to keep your Twitter separate your company Twitter separate from your regular Twitter and never mix the two unless it is your company like for instance Geekazine my Twitter is Geekazine I mean I'm not gonna fire myself I'm gonna keep the Geekazine name if for some reason I get rid of Geekazine I'm gonna get rid of the Twitter handle as well a lot of work but you know that's part of the package that's part of the, what if it's uh, geekazine's not technically for sale so but if you you know if you give me like five million dollars <laughs> you can have geekazine i'm just saying anyway in the meantime ladies and gentlemen boys and girls i don't think i'm gonna get five million dollars for geekazine but you know you can throw those offers in any way you want if you want to read that article go over to newyorktimes.com we got it in the show notes over at geekazine.com all right and of course twitter me geekazine Email geekazine at gmail.com. All right, we're going to take a small little break and uh, pay some bills, and then we're going to be right back with Geek Smack on Geekazine. Geekazine. Yeah. And now this word from our friends over at Mosey Pro. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's important to have good things when you're a business, a small business especially. It's a good idea to have good employees. It's a good idea to have good programs set up so you don't have to worry about it because you're doing so much more than what the average big business is doing because they can hire different people to do that. But ladies and gentlemen, backing up your data is one of the most important things. And if you back up your data on site, that's great. However, you might want to think of an off-site backup solution. When I was in IT, before we could uh, do over-the-internet backup, we always looked for an off-site solution. We actually set it up so the building next door backed up our data and we backed up their data, which was pretty cool. But, you know, 
out of all the hard drives that fail in a single week, 140,000 hard drives in a single week, even in a single incident of data loss can cost the company thousands, if not millions of dollars. Going down for a day or a week with your computer system, it's even going to be worse. You could find yourself in bankruptcy simply because of the fact you don't have a good backup off-site. That's why I want to tell you about Mosey. It's the most trusted name in online backup. They back up more data than the entire written word of mankind from the beginning of recorded history and in all languages. If you put that all together in a big melting pot and you multiply that, then you've got what Mosey backs up. They back up on Windows, Macs, uh, servers, over 70,000 organizations, Subway, is one of those organizations, GE, Starwood Hotels, Accenture, Stanford University, Yale School of Management. They all back up using a program, uh, Mosey Pro's program. It's easy, it's, uh, it's, it's easy to set up, it's easy to use, it saves time, it costs up to 80% less than other solutions, and it gives you the peace of mind of eliminating the hassle of backing up all your data. Now you have military, it's military grade, so you have, nobody's going to try, can get into your system or they're going to, it's, 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 it's amazing. And like I said, it's PCs, it's Macs, backs up servers. It uh, restores thousands of computers. We, I can tell you all the testimonials, but don't take my word for it. Call the number 877-669-9776. That's 877-669-9776 or visit moseypro.com. And use that code PODCAST15. Of course, that helps Geekazine and all tech podcast shows. PODCAST15 over at moseypro.com. You get 15% off to back up your data, protect your data now, uh, and protect your business. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome back to the show. Of course, we are on the Geek Smack side of things where we talk about all the geeky stuff and uh, go from there. We're going to start over on device.com today and check this out. This is the top tech trends of 2011. Um, and it's a pretty, pretty engulfed. I guess is that a word engulfed anyway uh, that's, it's, it's got a lot of great stuff on there they talk about Groupon they talk about uh, living social they talked about how Instagram was it, it grew in only a few months in a few months like for instance this article about uh, part about geolocation apps the the text is too small for me to read but um, online of course you can check it out find out about online video enterprise this is pretty cool for all you marketing geeks out there this is a great little uh, infographic so you can check that out over at device.com and once again all the show notes are over at geekazine.com you can always go to geekazine or the geek smack and that'll take you straight to geekazine uh, geek smack show where you can subscribe to the show notes all right, from there, let's uh, let's go over to Etsy.com. This is actually pretty, pretty sweet. For all you steampunkers out there, ste steampunk geeks, we've got the steampunk leather case for your iPad or your netbook or ultrabook, as they're going to be calling it very soon. I don't know if any of those gears work. I don't know if the pressure valve works or if there's a level on top there. I don't know if that works. But I do know that the latch works, and you can put your iPad into it and take your iPad out. So uh, for all you steampunk geeks out there that, that want to get a really cool case that probably does absolutely nothing, then check out the steampunk leather case, too, at Etsy.com. Gizmodo was talking about a man uh, who basically thought that he could just pass off a million-dollar bill to somebody. A uh, North Carolina man tried to... Uh, <laughs> tried to attempt to pay for a purchase with a $1 million bill that he made. Um, of course, th the watermarks didn't work, and, and he, he tried to uh, buy a $1 million worth of merchandise with the bill, and he just uh, you know, he got arrested. So silly people doing silly things. That is the beauty of the Internet. So check that out over at gizmodo.com. Moving on, let's go over to Fox News and hey, check, check, let's try that again. Check it out. Steve Jobs is alive in action figure form. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, you can get the incredibly lifelike Steve Jobs action figure. It's due in February. 
Uh, so you can't get it just yet. I'm assuming it's going to sell out. It's uh, about the size. I'm, I'm thinking about the size of a G.I. Joe, uh, the old G.I. Joe. So you can check that out, and uh, they're they're going to be uh, they're going to be taking orders from my understanding on there. So you can check that out if you want more information. Go over to foxnews.com and check out the Steve Jobs doll. I think I I might just get one and put it right here, so I can have Steve Jobs going, you know, doing maybe doing the Buddy Jesus. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> check it out foxnews.com. All right, let's move from there. If you are a Muppet geek and you're a cupcake geek, well, it, you, it's your lucky day. I don't know how to pronounce this website. I am G-U-R. Yeah, I'm Gur. I'm Imgur. I'm Gur. Oh, anyway, uh, if you go over to imgur.com, you can check this out. It is, yeah, that looks horrible. It is the Muppet Muppet Cupcakes. And as you can see, you got Fozzie Berry, you got Gonzo, you got uh, uh, Miss Piggy, Kermit, um, Ralph, uh, Animal, Beaker, and of course uh, many others. Uh, it's Waldorf, and I can't remember the other guy's name, the Grouchy uh, Grouchy Critics. So Siskel and Ebert, I used to call them when I was a kid. But if you want to check out the cupcakes, uh, it's I Am Gur, and you can find probably find out where you can get cupcakes like that. Pretty cool. Anyway, let's move on. Let's go over to our friends over at Chip Chick. They're talking about LG, and one of the things at CES that they're going to be talking about is the 55-inch OLED HD TVs, which look like they don't even have frames around them. So you'll be able to mount it to your wall, and there won't be any lines or anything like that. So you could probably hook up four monitors uh, in uh, square, so you can have a bigger TV, 110-inch TV from there but they're going to probably be very expensive their oled technology which is very crisp but once again there's there's a lot of lot of price on that and the best part about oled is they're talking about how oled does have a, a bendability to it and of course uh there was a video i saw over on uh, wall street journal that talks about how we're going to probably have bendable electronics very soon now i don't expect you to roll up your iphone for example but you'll be able it'll be able to bend so if you put it in your pocket and something in your you are put it in your back pocket and you sit down it's going to bend to the contour so it doesn't crack or break or anything like that so that's pretty cool but anyway check this out it's over at our friend's website chipchick.com and uh, we'll probably see them out at ces as well all right, going from there for all you science geeks over at the dailymail.co.uk, there's a plane that they're uh, they're putting together. It's called the Aviator, A V I A T R. And basically this plane is meant to soar above Saturn's moon Titan. So I'm assuming it's going to take pictures and get information, maybe map the terrain, maybe get some sort of samples in the air or something like that. It's a $715 million plane that they're putting together, and they are going. They just want to see what ha what's going on underneath that uh, atmosphere because it's way too cloudy and way too thick to try and get readings from here. So if you want to read more about that, go over to dailymail.co.uk. And then finally, ladies and gentlemen, you know, you're missing your cat. You're going, oh, I want to pet my kitty. Well, now you can do that if you've got a Kinect and a Wiimote. <laughs> you can check them. This is over at ExtremeTech.com. This is just hilarious. So basically what happens is um, you stand there in front of the Kinect, and there's a little robot that comes over and pets your cat. So you're doing this, and, and the robot's doing this, and nice kitty, nice kitty, nice kitty. I don't know. I, I'm I'm assuming that most cats will probably run away from a robot like this, uh, unless I don't know how that would work. But basically, they're working on technology on there. There's a video, and of course, I'm not going to show it here. But uh, go over to uh, extremetech.com to find out more about this way to remotely pet your cat with a Kinect and a Wiimote. I don't know. I don't have a cat. I'm, I, no, there's no fascination for that for me. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, that's the end of the Geek Smack section. We've got the feature section. We're going to talk a little bit about CES, and we're going to do that right now. But we will be right back.
You know, ladies and gentlemen, I don't normally talk about Wirecast Pro, but they're a big sponsor of this show. If it wasn't for a program like Wirecast Pro, I couldn't do half of the stuff that I normally do on this show. Like that switch right there from the screen to me and a live set of Geekazine. Um, you're seeing it on a webcam. I, can, I have a two webcam setup system. This is my second webcam. And of course, my screen right here. And then I can split screen. This is all through a program called Wirecast Pro. It's a great program. And it it shows you how you can produce live webcasts. You can you do two camera shoot. You can do two camera screen shoot. You can do uh, IP camera. Well, it depends on whether you get Wirecast 4 or Wirecast 4 Pro. Pro unlocks more features like scoreboards and stuff like that. So, I, you know, you could have a uh, one person versus one person do a Skype call hook it up on uh, Wirecast, and then put the scoreboard and say, okay, whoever gives me the right answer gets a point. Get a point here, get a point here. There's a ton of stuff you can do with Wirecast. So you should check it out. Prices start at $449. Remember, go over to geekazine.com forward slash Wirecast PC for the PC version or geekazine.com forward slash Wirecast Mac for the Mac version and produce your own live webcasts over on Telestream and Wirecast Pro. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this comes to our feature part of the show, and that's basically, we're going to talk, if I get the right screen up here, there we go, we're going to talk about CES. Of course, on Friday, I head out to Consumer Electronics Show at like 6 o'clock in the freaking morning, but then I get there at like 11 o'clock in the morning so i'll have some time to uh, run around las vegas we got the back channel we got the main channel for ces um, i'm going to be joined by todd cochran andy mccaskey that evening we're going to set up the booth on sunday and then of course the live stream the back channel lives are yeah the back channel stream will start on monday january 9th because i think we'll have enough content to put in there for that and of course it'll be continuous stream uh, I'll start the stream probably about 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, 8 o'clock Eastern time, and then you can watch the videos, and as I add more video, it, I'll put it right in there, and you'll be able to watch it as we go. But the live stream, the interviews start on Tuesday the 10th, and we're going to have a lot of fun with that. Of course, we're doing the exact same thing we did last year. We have the exact same booth in the exact same location. We're going to move some stuff around, so you're going to see a different angle of CES, but it'll be a lot of fun. Plus, we've got probably the biggest crew that we've had in our travels to the CES. We got the guys over at Netcast Studios that are going to be joining us. Andy's crew from RVNN.tv. Got a friend of mine, Wesley, uh, that's going to be coming out to uh, CES to help out. We've got the Plug Hits guys, the Plug Hits guys that are going to be coming out as well. And we've got 17 people. Kara is also going to be there, and Jack. Um, the old standards, the people that have been there for the last few years. So I'm, I'm really excited. 17 people means we have three camera shoot teams out on the floor at all times. And I, that's awesome because we got 250 videos. And with the live stream, we're going to do live a little bit different. We're not going to do them in segments. We're going to do them in hour-long shows. But all of our floor interviews, I have a feeling we're going to hit 250 floor interviews. Plus, we're going to do CES Unveiled. Plus, we're going to do Digital Experience. Plus, we're going to do Showstoppers and all the after events. It's awesome. It's always awesome. I mean, always have a lot of fun time. Now, enough about that. Of course, you can go over to tpn.tv to find out more and to watch the live streams. I'll have the live streams up on geekazine.com as well. So you can watch it right here. But there's a lot of talk about what's going to happen at CES, what we're going to be expecting. Now, we talked about it very briefly about OLED technology. Very excited about that because, like I said, you, you don't need to have the borders. You don't need to have the frame around the screen. You just have the screen. And so that's going to make technology really cool because now you can put your own frame around it or no frame whatsoever. You can actually put monitor next to monitor, underneath monitor next to monitor, and turn one monitor or four monitors into one bigger monitor. You have uh, once OLED technology, because it does have a bendability to it, like I said, we, you might be able to actually create your own IMAX screen out of 12 OLED monitors in the future. And if, right now, one OLED monitor, 55 inch, is gonna be like super expensive. 
So that might be down the road, but for a lot of people like uh, NBC or or CBS that has you know MSNBC, they'll they'll have their news and and they'll have their video screens in the back. Like for instance, this scene right here, that I built this. I mean, these this is all regular stuff. This is a real Mickey Mouse, but I could easily turn this into a big video wall and then have this just projecting this thing right here and you wouldn't notice the difference. That's the beauty of all this stuff. So anyway, OLED, it'll be a big thing, but still out of price range. Ultrabooks are going to be the big thing. Now, Ultrabooks are, the, are Intel's answers to MacBook Airs. Any type of PC, a thin book PC, will be an Ultrabook. And, uh, and of course, like this MacBook right here, well, of course, that's a bad example. This laptop right here will be about half its size, if not more. It'll just be super thin. And they're using the Intel Ivy Bridge processor, which is supposed to be coming out in March. Now, the Ivy Bridge processor is smaller. It's going to have graphics, and it's going to have multi-core processing in it. So you might actually get a four-core system with an Ultrabook. I will buy an Ultrabook if it has the power to take my videos, the, all the video content that I create, and actually store it, and also be able to process it into videos. Like for instance, the iPad 365 videos. It takes a lot of process to create those videos. I do it on this machine right here. It's very easy to do because it's got the process power. But if these Ultrabooks don't have that process power, I'm not even gonna touch them. I'm expecting them to have that power. And I can't wait for that to happen. Now, another thing that they're going to talk about is tablets and all this software. So a lot of consumers are going to be very, very interested. The regular consumers that don't care about CES normally, you should be. Because there's going to be a lot of devices for your smartphone, for your Android, for your iPhone, for your tablet, maybe your Kindle Fire, maybe your iPad that are going to be out at CES. I think that there's going to be a generation gap that's going to close a little bit because everybody's getting smartphones and smartphone numbers are rising. And that's pretty much thanks to the Android market who basically saturated it with Android phones that you can actually afford. It's amazing time and CES is gonna be an amazing show. It's sold out. They sold out their floor and they've even moved everything to the Venetian, which if you were in CES a few years ago, everything wasn't at, was at the Sands. And then, uh, and then the recession hit and, and they closed the Sands area and then they rebuilt now CES is sold out and they've got another group at the Venetian and that's amazing. So now we've got to figure out how to cover another area along with something like 10 football fields worth of content already. We're expecting to do a great job of it. So go over to TPN.TV and check it all out. We've got a lot of video. Todd just posted his packing video um, of all the TriCaster and video equipment. So expect an awesome year at CES. Uh, whether you know nor, whether you normally follow consumer electronics or you don't, it's amazing. So. Anyway, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, any comments at all, Twitter me at Geekazine. Of course, Geekazine at gmail.com. I do have the hotline of 608-205-4378. If you want to call that number, go ahead and do so. Geekazine uh, process, we do this uh, every single week, every Tuesday for Wednesday consumption. Remember, next week we're at CES, so no show. The week after no show um depending on how much work i have to do because of the ipad 365 show and, and ces putting all that video up online we might take a, a three weeks off so we might be back in a month with more shows with geekazine and of course check out the new show ipad 365 where we pretty much review an app a day for 365 days everything is under a creative commons no derivative license which means you can hand this off to your friends your friends friends your friends friends your friends friends dogs and maybe even the cat maybe even go through a connect system and pet them through the wii mote and, and play the show during i don't know but if you start selling the show better give me my cut or else Vinny is going to come after you kidding anyway that's the show thanks a lot for watching my name is jeffrey powers you guys have a great one and always remember to geek out over at geekazine Take care.